Hello, hello, greetings from uh, very hot Portugal in the south of Europe. Do you think that uh, your resume is still being something truly important to get that job, to be in front of the others? Okay, if you think so, you're in the right place. Soon, David will teach you, will tell you amazing tips and insights to come ahead, your, the other appliance to get that job. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, hello, good night, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever you are. <laughs> If you are watching us live now or the replay, please let us know where you are for where, wait, how are you there? Uh, if you still locked down at home or if you are uh, traveling around the street, let us know. Well, today I have a, another truly special guest, David. Alto, which means in Portuguese, alto means high. I don't know, David, if you know it. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, it means uh, tall and stop also. Yeah, in, uh, yeah, Spanish. yeah, right. So <laughs> let me bring you to the screen. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's how you say alto, stop. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, go to, if you go to Mexico, my name's all over the place because it's on the stop sign. <laughs> Absolutely. So, David, thanks a lot to, to, to be here. It's a pleasure. It's something, it's something, it's, even though today we have so many platforms to, to shine, to be, to stay uh, in front of, ahead of the others, to, to be like more shiny to the recruiters, I think, Resume still being something important, or at least to take care of. So, first thing I, I have to, to ask you is to introduce yourself, and then let's talk a little bit about this. Could it be, please? Sure. Uh, thank you for uh, having me on the show. And, by the way, the music and the introduction... I was waiting for, I was going to, I was continuing to rock out uh, for, for a while. So good choice. Good choice of music. Uh, my name is David Alto. Uh, I guess you could say CEO. I'm a team of one. So CEO probably ain't the best uh, terminology, but uh, uh, my company, Alto Advance, what we really specialize in is getting people's resume past those evil darn resume scanning cy cyborgs, robots, bots, whatever you want to call them, the ATS. Uh, but we do uh, career coaching, interview prep, resume, LinkedIn profile as well, too, because that goes in hand, that goes hand in hand with, a, with an amazing uh, resume. So, you know, overall, that's uh, a little bit about what I do. Perfect. I don't know, David, if you, because I, I had that nightmare when I finished my, my graduation, which was, I don't know if you ever heard about something really, really, truly, deeply nice here in Europe, which is the Europass <laughs> resume style, which is a, a oh, one Oh, yes, I've all. seen it. <laughs> yes, I've seen them before. Oh, my God. It was so freaking <laughs> awful. <laughs> so... One, I think one of the first things that you should you should have in mind when you're building the the resume is to get away from these standardized uh, resumes, which one it's never mind. For instance, one thing I, I've saw, it, it, and for me it was oh my god, I, I, I'm this is not true. A designer, he had a website. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Watch my look, uh, download my CV. And then I made it and I was I was expecting something really nice, uh, good looking. And I saw a, a new, and I said, oh, my God, really? <laughs> no, there, there's a uh, look, I I love the ones and I'm being very sarcastic. You know, the one pager that has your picture that has a bunch of graphs, that has a bunch of metrics, and really it looks pretty, right? And I wish we could use resumes like that, but you can't. 
Again, they look pretty. If you could hand somebody, fantastic. But because hundreds of people are applying for the same jobs, hundreds, not not one, two, 600 people are applying for the same jobs, you have to have a resume that will get past the screening, the ATS, applicant tracking software. Companies use it because they have to. They get so many applicants. And what it does is it looks for keywords. And then if you have enough keywords, you get past the software and potentially in the hands of a, you know, somebody in HR to, can, to potentially uh, you know, call you. I subscribe to some of the same scanning software as the companies do, which allows me to put the finishing touches on a resume and help my clients even after the fact make sure that their, their, that resume is going to align for each of the jobs that they apply for. And it's usually just tweaking it ever so slightly. But the problem is, is if you don't, you're using the same resume and applying for hundreds of jobs, and then you get nothing or you get only those rejection emails. And then you get frustrated because maybe you paid somebody to do your resume. Because most coaches, believe it or not, do not subscribe to some of the same resume scanning software. They don't want to do it or they don't care. I care because it's not about just having a great resume anymore. And I learned that the hard way about a year plus ago when I was still searching for maybe a different career before I started doing this full time. So as usual, knowing your customer, it's critical. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so, which I think that there's there's some, even though things are changing a lot and lately they changed a, a lot. <laughs> I think there's there's too many mistakes that uh, maybe they are a little bit twentieth century. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and and one one you mentioned, which is. Uh, I have this resume. It doesn't matter if I'm applying. Uh, uh, it's uh, I'm applying to I don't know a customer service or um, a market research company. I will send the same email. What What do you recommend for uh, someone who's wa- looking for a job right now? Okay. What he or she should uh, search and pay attention to build the right resume. Okay. Well, uh, you know, again, you know, uh, your resume, I'll give you some free tips. You know, your resume should include the job description. So your name, now I'm going to talk about only U.S. uh, uh, resumes just for the moment. Your name, no address, city and state that you live in, email address, Maybe a maybe you your URL for your LinkedIn if your LinkedIn is spot on. No hyperlinks, please. No PDF. Send it in Word doc only. The resume scanning software dislikes and has a hard time scanning PDFs. <laughs> no, again, no hyperlinks because if they print it, you can't hyperlink a piece of paper. So no hyperlinks. Uh, and then then maybe the the. T- title of that job because that scanning software is kind of looking for that job title. And um, when they print it, make it easy on them. Know what position that you're applying for. Okay. And then maybe a brief summary, go right into your work experience and then uh, put month and year, please. Um, Resume scanning software expects it. When you apply online, you're going to need to anyway. Uh, And then education down at the bottom. Now, a lot of people yell at me, Dave, no, I want to promote my education up top. Maybe in some, maybe in some medical industries and some positions, but to be honest, at at the bottom, and then maybe a list of competencies, really a big core of competencies that get your keywords, you know, some keywords that get past, uh, you know, the Reddit resume scanning um, software, and then metrics, accomplishments, for each of the jobs, you got to have those. And, you know, uh, again, it's slowing down uh, when you create and, and, and I've seen plenty of people create their own. And maybe I just give them some tidbits, advice, some free tips. Um, but then again, then it's, you know, do you have a great, amazing uh, LinkedIn profile as well? So maybe we could, can 
talk also about this because I think too much people still thinking that uh, LinkedIn is just a kind of online resume, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can be so much more than that. Um, I mean, now when I got on LinkedIn, that's what I thought it was too, just like everybody else. But it's a great way to connect. So much B two B happens, you know, business to business, B two C even occasionally. Um, I know if I'm looking for, you know, I was looking for a new website designer, uh, uh, you know, designer. I was looking for a virtual assistant. Where did I go? I just spread the. I made a post on LinkedIn waited for everybody to comment, uh, interviewed a few, and and there you go. So uh, LinkedIn is more than that. It's also a place for you to share industry best, uh, you know, best practices. We're all a subject matter expert at something. Share it. You'll learn something new. You know, you'll, you'll help somebody else. So yeah, LinkedIn is just not the platform anymore for just only recruiters and people, you know, posting. You can make so many re different relationships. Um, I think you and I were drinking last uh, last uh, week or the two weeks ago together, yeah. virtually, virtually where we met. <laughs> so again, but and then now, you know, we obviously have, uh, you know, video that we can do and talk to people halfway around the world. So LinkedIn is an amazing place to meet amazing people. Absolutely. One thing I'm I'm here. Well, uh, th there's there's also uh, uh, th th so many questions coming to my head because one thing people used to think, and uh, we are now again in a time that's really challenging about this. Oh, I'm working. I I have my job, a safe job, a safe job. Yeah. <laughs> Why should I matter uh, uh, working on LinkedIn, uh, networking, creating sure. or sharing content? Uh, why should I take a look at my uh, my resume? Doesn't matter. I'm working. <laughs> Stay away That's from right. me. That's <laughs> right. That's right. So okay. Now we know a lot of jobs were impacted over the last you know three, four, five months, right? So if you're a planner, you have your resume ready for you know what if, right? You you always okay. Why do we save for retirement? Why do we, why do we save, what do we save money, right? We save it for later. You got to have that resume ready. You, so I'm on LinkedIn building, you know, relationships because maybe it doesn't, you know, there's no, we don't strike up any deal or partnership now, but you never know what advice and whatever. So again, you plan for things, you know, to potentially change. I do have clients that do say, uh, Dave, I think I'll wait a little bit until I might need. But to be honest, most of my clients all have jobs. Maybe they work, um, you know, an individual um, that I just helped, he works at uh, Boeing, you know, <laughs> you know, one of the one of the world's, you know, largest companies, and obviously the, the maker of so many airplanes and, uh, and, and other uh, uh, space related, uh, you know, projects and stuff. But they're going to be laying off a bunch of people in June. Well, I had a client that says, I may or may not be one of them, but I'm going to get my stuff together now. Um, the lights went out. Okay. I forgot to pay. I forgot to pay the. the I bill. forgot to pay the bill. It'll it's come back heaven. on. Okay. It, um, so okay. it's it's yeah, go okay. So the the one thing that I wanted to share um, is is this. Here's some things that you can do on LinkedIn now. So. This is easy. If there's companies that you want to work for, okay, but you they do not have any jobs posted, this is what you do. You go onto LinkedIn, you go into the search bar, you hit you you click inside it, drops down, you click people, then you click companies, type the name of the company, click in the search bar again, the LinkedIn search bar, you type the title of the position you're looking for. Okay? And then you connect with people that are doing that same job in that same industry. Let's just be random row for a, for a quick second. Project manager at Amazon. Search people, company, Amazon. Go back into the search. Click that. And then you type project manager. And then guess what? Connect with project managers. And maybe you say something like this. You know, hey, uh, you know, uh, the reason I was connected with you, Amazon's on my short list of companies to potentially work for someday. 
hoping you could share a little bit of your industry insights and maybe your uh, time in the position uh, you know, with Amazon. Thank you very much. They respond to you, and then maybe you say something like this. Hey, thank you for all that detailed information, Marco. Hey, there was a you know, if there were a position become available as a project manager with Amazon, do you think my LinkedIn profile, you know, sells, you know, you know, highlights what I've done? And you know what? Because who knows transferable skills better than the person actually doing the job? The, this is a great best practice. If you see a job that you want to apply for before applying, doing this. And I tell you what, I, I always coach my clients on doing this. And now is a great time. Find those, you know, little few companies that you might potentially want to work for. Maybe there's not a position available currently. People, company, position, reach out to people doing that job now. Because there's companies that give out referral bonuses. Who couldn't use an extra 500 to a couple thousand dollars, you know, for a referral bonus right now? And and the and people genuinely on LinkedIn are very, excuse me, very giving. So the people that do reply, those are the people that you want in your corner. And that's what you need to do on a regular basis, um, even if, if you're looking for a job or in this downtime of maybe there's not enough jobs posted right now. Absolutely. Well, because, uh, for instance, yesterday I was, I think it was yesterday, I was in a call with a, a friend of mine, which is our Portuguese guru on LinkedIn. And we were talking about those knockers who just remember about you when they need. Yes. Look, David. Oh, and and uh, look, and, and you say, when he or she is uh, knocking at your door, okay, he doesn't have job. He needs me. Otherwise, <laughs> it doesn't knock. So that that it's important uh, this uh, connection nurturing, even before you may need them. Because yes. uh, what one thing you, you can do also is to reframe your your kind of work or, or at least to focus in which skills you need, which kind of content you should uh, focus on and everything, right? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, the one thing that, you know, everybody hates is, you know, somebody messaging you on LinkedIn and saying, hi, can you help me? Here's my resume, right? So again, <laughs> yes, you nurture relationships just like you do anything else, right? If you're dating somebody, you don't go and say, hey, will you marry me the same day, right? Well, maybe you do. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how that goes for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. But no, you nurture it, right? It's the same thing that you do on LinkedIn. You don't build for today. You build for the future. And, and that's a great way to build relationships too on LinkedIn. Well, on anywhere, right? You don't automatically meet somebody and say, here's my resume, right? At a party. No, you don't. Even though you digitally, you might have it. Again, um, you build it over time. That's why I hate those posts of those people. You know, hey, let's grow, you know, a thousand followers in a day. You know, <laughs> why? I have a lot of followers, but that's because I'm active. People like, like the content, like the silly content that I put out there. So they follow me but you build it over time. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the point. And I think, for instance, I, I just started really working on LinkedIn since uh, December because they gave me, and, and it, it was kind of a promise I made to, to, that, the, to my friend um, we, on a live show. He was my guest and I, uh, we were talking about LinkedIn Live and I made he, that promise. Look, I know I have... Um, a ghost profile on LinkedIn. <laughs> but when they give me the availability to go live, I will change it. And I had uh, about, I didn't have 1,000 contacts when they um, in December, and now I have 4,500, something like that. So that looks working, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will. And, oh, go ahead. And uh, the, I, I start because engagement you get bef after building content, sharing content, engage with. I think, I don't know, because uh, American people are different than, than, than at least Portuguese. We are really, it's hard to get a comment, usually, from a, a Portuguese. They could be, they are, the, I think we, the lurker 
uh, it's a Portuguese. <laughs> if you have 10 lurkers, five are Portuguese for sure. <laughs> no, uh, listen, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. And, you know, different, different areas. And yes, in the US, maybe we need to slow down a little bit and be a little bit more of a lurker, maybe a little bit, but. <laughs> because, because um, I think when you're starting something uh, and mostly on LinkedIn, because I think it's the, the, the office thing. Uh, Facebook is good, but it's a kind of a bar or something. Instagram, it's a restaurant or a, a yeah. hotel's lobby. <laughs> doesn't matter. But LinkedIn, it's the place to do business. Okay. So I, th I think one of the things I, I it's the, because it's it's not easy to come with content at first, okay? And when I know, I think you also know, David, when you are in the content business, you know how hard it is to give that first step because you will stay very vulnerable and you 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 will feel that everybody's looking at you at that at that moment. So don't you think that people underrate? the power of the comments on the posts. Yes, I mean, uh, so most authors, so the person that, that is doing the post, they post because they want comments. Now, you know, I'm not worried about views. I, I want comments, I want engagement. Why? Because I might learn something from my post or maybe I'm putting a question out there or maybe I need a, you know, maybe I do have a, a, a serious question that I'm trying to get answered. But, but yes, we want, different people's opinion from all over the globe. Um, because again, we want that engagement. We, I wish the like thing, the like button wasn't there. It, that doesn't do anything for me. If I get 500 likes on a post, but two comments, okay, it, it, it's irrelevant how many people like it. So again, it is about the actual comment we want that comment. And that, I think that's the, I think that's how I got started with LinkedIn is I finally, I was commenting on things that I found relevant. Uh, I posted my first video, uh, January 24th, 2019. How do I know that day? Uh, I turned 50 that day and I posted a <laughs> video on LinkedIn. And what did I talk about? I talked about retirement, you know, not me retiring, but how to save for retirement. And not that I'm a financial guru, but it's something that, uh, I know a little, a few things about, but anyway, um, that's what, that was my first video. So um, it was just to kind of break me out of my shell. And I, I think that, you know, we worry about, you know, how our hair looks, right? Well, I don't, but we worry about how our <laughs> hair looks, how we're going to sound, right? I don't edit my videos. So if I screw up, I either stop or I collect my thoughts and keep going. Why? Because I learned a long time ago that when I did 70 straight days of doing video, I did this 30 day challenge of doing 30 straight days and I made it to 70, but I learned that again, nobody cares if something's a mess in your backyard or in your house or they, uh, they hear a car, uh, a car honk or whatever. It is uh, literally about the content. So you don't just say, I'll do it when this, I'll do it when this, I hear that all the time. I'll do it when this finally, no, just get your cellular phone out, turn it sideways and shoot video. <laughs> no, not up and down, not up and down sideways. Yeah, yeah, I learned absolutely. that a long time ago. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but again, you know, again, but you look, we all started, I, I didn't start with 29,000 followers. I have 15,000 connections, 20, 29,000 followers. I didn't start off with that, okay? I learned from so many others that either saw me struggling or I just asked for advice. You know, somebody, I didn't care. I thought these people were, you know, influencers. I just message them. I just say, I have a question. And a couple of them would answer. So again, LinkedIn is a very giving platform and you don't know what you don't know until you just go and do it. And that's what you need to do. So, and I'm a little, you know, I'm a little butthurt that you got LinkedIn Live. I've applied four times. They don't like <laughs> they, you. Obviously, know what you're doing, and they know that not to give me LinkedIn Live. So, Hope, hopefully, <laughs> they will give you soon. <laughs> They're never gonna give it to me. That's okay. It's more of yeah. a chase. Yeah, but it's 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 an amazing it's an amazing platform for of course because I have the same 
mindset as you. I don't like to edit video. I'm really lazy about it because I like, that's why people ask me also, why you go live? Because one thing on live stream is that uh, almost the producing time is 100% useful content. Because for instance, if you want to record a video five minutes, you'll spend half an hour at least because yes. you have to repeat, you have to cut, you have to edit or everything. Yes. Live video, introduction, content, 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 wrap up, goodbye. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Nobody, nobody expects you to be perfect. Why? It's live. Absolutely, and even even the recorded videos. I don't. I people ask me, and if and and that, that that's that's the, the the thing about this. You talked about uh, the cocktail we we met. Uh, a big shout out to Marcello. <laughs> this oh yeah, amazing, amazing guy. And one thing also. Uh, I think it's important when you, even though, and here in Portugal, we take that business thing in, of LinkedIn too serious. It's, we, we see business in a really gray way and not a, as a, a human thing. And you, you talk about, okay, uh, connection. And uh, I think I don't have any business thing in mind when I, started connecting with Marcello. He's on the recycling business. I don't think that I will buy something from him or yeah, he, he will buy he's something. A glorified, he's a glorified garbage man, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think I met you, uh, Chris, and every uh, other people. I, and I don't know about you, but I think it's the same. Maybe business will happen someday. Maybe, but we share so much things, information, and I think it's important to have this in mind, not to business but uh, more connection and learning and sharing. And of course, something that uh, brings something, brings some value, even though it's something that little, little, but it's important. Don't Oh, yes, you're absolutely right now. Uh, and I do think, you know, um, from time to time, it is okay for you to share something not business related. Why? Because maybe you're not on Facebook anymore and you still want that, maybe a dog picture, a dog, a cute little dog video once in a while. <laughs> and, that, that's okay, and that's okay. Well, you know, LinkedIn, you know, you can watch what you want to watch and, or don't. You know, I did have a potential client one time not hire me because um, they saw my videos. And they, even though it wasn't very informative and they thought I knew what I was talking about, he couldn't get over the fact that I wasn't suited up in my videos. Didn't have my, you know, didn't have my, you know, shirt and tie on. Well, because I left that career, I don't need a tie to write a resume. So again, it's the combination of business, but again, doesn't have to be all that serious like you were like, like you were saying it just doesn't have to be because business isn't all that serious all the time either again yeah there's a place and time for it but yeah um, we just need you just need to be yourself and be genuine there will be people that love that and people that don't and there's plenty of people to go around what almost 700 million uh, people here on LinkedIn so you're gonna find your audience absolutely and another thing came to my mind which is important uh, when we are talking about appliance to uh, a job, which is, uh, and you talk about this uh, and it comes to my mind because th there's that, that, that thing that we should also, uh, as a, an appliant, to know if that company is a fit for me. And if you can connect with someone who's working on that company who may help you look, uh, the culture of the company, our uh, DNA is like this. And then you can, okay, you can understand because there's something when even uh, as a company to see if you are a, a good customer for me or not is to see and to avoid that customer who is not for me because we have that also. We should be aware of that. Don't yes. you think it's, it's a, another useful thing that you can get on LinkedIn uh, about this? 
Oh, yes. I mean, what if you, you know, get, get a hold of that project manager with Amazon and they tell you some things about the job and then you go, wait a minute. Mm, I already know that about me. So I don't think maybe that's a good fit for me. So yes. And, and that's okay. Or if somebody says, Hey, do you have these skills? Well, that might not be a good fit. Again, yes, you got to do your homework. I mean, we invest so much time and energy into our careers. If you're in the search, if you're searching for a new career, please don't worry so much about the job and the paycheck and the benefits and the, you know, again, you know, the, the pay. Worry about if you're going to be a good fit. And they're a good, you know, and vice versa. Again, you know, uh, I think we, we we really have to. And let's face it, you know, companies know what they're kind of looking for in individuals now. I mean, they do, uh, especially a lot of the big companies, Amazon. Uh, I hear some good things and then I hear some bad things because the culture is different. Um, again, maybe not not what you're used to in a you know in different organizations. So you have to do your homework and not just apply for job for job for job and job and just say, well, any job's going to do for me. So you're not going to be happy that way. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about something really important. When you're uh, well, okay, you went through the the, the resume choice, and now it's <laughs> the interview time. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> so interview time. Um, I can tell you what they'll they'll structure some questions generally. If you've given them some accomplishments, some you know, if you've given them some bullet points of some accomplishments and metrics, they'll really hand feed you answers. They will. The typical company, maybe six to eight, ten questions. If you're applying for Amazon, I keep on bringing Amazon up uh, only because I applied it for Amazon one time. Uh, <laughs> that was a brutal interview, by the way. Uh, uh, they ask a lot of questions. Uh, but anyway, they hand feed you answers. They do. If you think of your answers as stories, think about, think about that time that you had that project or something, right? How'd you accomplish it? How, how'd you start it? You know, what did you do to gather resources? Did you get somebody involved? And even if it didn't end up 100% the way you wanted, you talk about what you learned and gained from that experience. Because just because maybe you didn't reach that milestone in that project or whatever, right? But again, you want it to be fluid, okay? When you show emotion during an interview, it's because you're passionate and you care and generally because you're not a good liar, it's because it's the truth. <laughs> okay. Unless you're a good actor. I am not. But when you when you're when you when you raise your voice, when you get when you're smiling, when you're answering, almost like I'm doing now because I'm watching myself, right? <laughs> you know, you can see that passion in people. So all you gotta do is think of your answers as stories, have about eight or nine of them, practice with somebody, could be a buddy on LinkedIn right? Because you can't go to nobody's house no more, right? Or at least I can't where I'm located in the uh, United States. We're still quarantined. Um, but again, practice with a loved one or somebody. But again, it's, a, it's just genuinely telling about a story. And that story will probably relate to a bunch of different questions that they ask you. And when you do that, you're less, you're less nervous. Oh, one thing before I forget, with within 24 hours of an interview, no caffeine. Oh. <laughs> I'm serious. No caffeine within 24 hours of you doing an interview. And that is coffee, whatever type of uh, caffeine fix you get within 24 hours. Do not. Um, your, your brain will actually work faster than your mouth and... Uh, Sometimes that's not, a, 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 I'm caffeinated all the time. I wake up <laughs> caffeinated, it seems like. So ca caffeine for me just makes me, but no, but I'm serious. Yeah, no caffeine 24 hours before an uh, interview. You can get your caffeine fixed right after that. So, And, and uh, another thing, uh, and here here in Portugal, we have that, that problem. The hierarchies are something that distancing between the employee and the employer, uh, it's, it's something, it's something, in, in Latin countries, it's it's even more, uh, you can see that. Okay. And one thing that uh, 
people are truly scared to make questions to, to them because and, and and also to challenge them because I I one of the things I I'm always saying is for instance one thing oh I want to work here because I want to learn because you are really good and I used to say to people who think like that look you were on the school, on the college to learn. You don't go to a job to learn. Of course, you learn. We learn all the time. Oh, come on. Yes. <laughs> But don't go with that mindset because they don't don't want you to, to learn. They want you to, to fix problems. Yes. Oh, and that, uh, on the questions, when I, I did a lot of interviews way back in the, I mean, I did for a long time. When you come with questions, it shows that you want the job. Come with questions and ask them if you can take notes. So, uh, hey, thank you, Marco. Hey, before I um, before I get started, before I get started in the interview process, Marco, is it okay for me to jot down some notes as we're, you know, uh, during the interview process today? They like that. Why? Again, it shows that you want that job. You you might want to write down some notes, and that's a good time to write down the names of the people that are interviewing you, especially if it's more than a few, because you're going to forget because you're going to get nervous Absolutely. no matter how prepared you are. So that gives you permission, write down their name, write down whatever, but take, ask to take notes, ask them some questions, even if they answered them, you know, come up with some, you know, uh, questions about the position. Don't automatically go towards, you know, well, what do I do to got to be, uh, to take your job? You know, you want to maybe ease into that. You know, what type of, uh, you know, do you have any, you know, mentoring programs or anything like that? You could ask that. But again, come with some really good questions, some solid questions. Again, tell stories. Ask if uh, you're allowed to take some notes. They'll always say yes. Absolutely. I guess unless it's some top secret job, then no. <laughs> yeah, you they know, will kill you. Have to, you have to eat them. You have to eat your notes. <laughs> so... And after that, because th there's the, the, another problem, the follow-up, because most of the times, and it, it happens also when you send uh, in the resume stage. Okay, let me send, and then, oh, I'm so disappointed, because I think one of the problems of these times is that we think that things happen too fast, and they should happen fast every time. I mean... I'm hitting the button, send email, and I'm waiting to get the job offer the right, the very next moment. No, you're right. And we think that the first day we start working in the company, we will reach the VC <laughs> place. <laughs> yeah, no, um, listen, you know, I really, when you, when you, after you apply, I want you to forget about it. You move on to the next one. Uh, you maybe you do some research and wait. Um, you know, I do have a lot of clients that have said, "Well, I'm going to wait until this one job contacts me before applying for others." And I'm like, "Well, they may never reply to you." Okay, they have hundreds and hundreds of people. Or, you know, you may never hear from them one reason or from one one way, one way or not. You may interview and never ever receive a call. Well, unless it's to hire you, but you may, I'm just, I'm, I'm just letting you know. So, you know, you could follow through, you could ask a recruiter or a lot of times the recruiter will say, Hey, within three or four days, we will at least reach out to you with an email to tell you the next steps. And you can always ask in advance what the next steps are. But again, um, not every company, not every hiring manager, not a, every HR department, is going to reach back out to you even after an interview. It's just, it's just not, it's just not realistic for you to always receive that, um, you know, that email or that message. So just, you can't dwell on it. <laughs> But you can, right? I mean, you take note of the name of the person. That's right. And, and it's, it's important to, to do that follow-up, right? Oh, yes. I mean, you know, there's no reason that you can't ask that recruiter. Um, you know, I wasn't provided, you know, uh, an email address for the people that interviewed me. Would it be possible to at least to get that so I could, you know, send them a response, you know, or, or ask for it in, you know, in advance from that recruiter? That recruiter um, 
if on your side, prior to the interview or after the interview, should be able to provide that or might forward it to you. Maybe they don't want you to have their contact information or whatever, um, but it doesn't hurt to ask because again, that just reassures everybody that you do in fact, you're not just going through the motions of doing an interview. You want this job. So, and, and it, here we used to say that uh, you can lose the, the business right now, but don't lose the customer. It's kind of the same thing. I mean, maybe you lose the, the job now, but at least you left there a good impression, which is also really important. Yes. So, listen, the smart hiring managers, the smart HR individuals, if they interviewed five people and two of them were fantastic and they can only hire one, they're going to keep that other person on a short leash, meaning maybe every month or two, they follow up back up, maybe say, oh, I applied for a position. Hey, David, um, I, I know you're probably, you know, uh, disappointed that you didn't get this role, but we, we foresee us potentially hiring again in the next six months for an additional position. We hope that we could reach out to you and contact you. There are employers out there like that. I used to be one of those types of hiring managers. I would keep everybody that I thought could have, I could have hired, but I only chose one. And every so often I would follow up with that individual and, or say, Hey, I'm getting ready to open up a rec. Are you still interested? Because if so, I, I'll just open it up. You will apply. I'll close it. I'll hire you. I've done that, but there, but that's few and far between. Um, but um, there are people, like I said, there are HR, uh, there are hiring managers out there that do that. And you never, you never know. So make, make that good impression. Even if you didn't get the job, thank them for their time. Absolutely. Because as you said, if they are not like that, no problem. <laughs> Absolutely. If they are perfect. It is. Yes. You, you never know. Just like we talked about LinkedIn. Okay. We're not building relationships for now. We're building relationships for the future. You know, same thing. Maybe a better position would become available with that company. So again, keep those avenues open. Maybe even, maybe you're able to connect with them on LinkedIn, um, you know, afterwards. So. Well, we are coming to, to the end. I, I, there's something I need to, I need to ask you. Do you see sometimes the, the candidates struggling or cursing because uh, there's some kind of uh, skills they, the, the companies ask that they don't have? I, 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 I will <laughs> explain you this question because it was a nonsense episode I faced. Um, When I was finishing my, my, my college degree, I was also in the, I don't know, we have a, a student's association, which is a, a, a group who manages, who helps the students in many ways. And so we were, we were there working and there was another girl which was Her degree was <laughs> international affairs, <laughs> okay? And she was looking to, to job offers and she was cursing. Oh my God, they all ask English. And I thought to myself, I didn't say anything because I was scared she, she may kill me. <laughs> so... You want to make a career in in affairs, international affairs, and you just want to talk Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, no. So, <laughs> well, international just in Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course, maybe Brazil <laughs> and per Paris. <laughs> So listen, sometimes people apply for jobs they have no reason to apply for. I mean, they, they, they just, you know what, I, I do hear for this from clients is, you know what, maybe they'll give me a chance. Nobody's going to give you a chance, okay? You either meet that criteria or not. But um, listen, 
you know, I would say that there's one skill. If, if, if you're in your 40s and your 50s and you have a very good track record of work history, and if it requires a degree, this job that you're applying for, but you don't have the degree, but you match up 100% to everything else, apply for the job anyway. A lot of companies will put that, again, just so less people apply and only you know quality candidates. But that degree from 20 plus years ago is really not that relevant anymore if you have that work history. So I do run into that um, with clients that get jobs and still says re degree required. But um, listen, you do really have to ask yourself and don't kid yourself. Can you do everything in that job? And if there are some skills that you just don't have, that job may not be a good fit for you. You really have to check your ego. You do. And just and apply, not for hundreds of jobs, and hope somebody, you know what? I'll just apply for 5,000 jobs, and somebody will give me a chance. Again, uh, if you don't meet enough of the skills, nobody's going to give you a chance because they're not going to chance their company with... Absolutely your lack of skills. So again, <laughs> check your ego, make sure that you do align, but uh, not, not all those skills. Some are suggested and, and again, and, and rightfully slow. So, but, uh, but again, uh, make sure you're applying for jobs that, uh, and yeah, if you're in, you know, maybe she would, maybe she should learn some English if she wants. Yeah, to absolutely. Be, uh, because I, I don't, I don't conceive that. Okay. Let me, write down the profile of someone to to apply okay let me screw that guys okay let me put they need to talk english just to just to bother them <laughs> yeah, no right there's a reason because, because they need of course it's what they need <laughs> yeah, I, I am not going to apply to be a attorney just because i watch you know law and CSI. order on, yeah, CSI. <laughs> I've watched, you know, I've watched them all. So, right. Again, we can't kid ourselves. We do have to really seriously. I, I know pl there's plenty of people out there that, oh, if they only give me a chance and I have to, I have to bring them back in. I have to reel them back in and say, client, listen, you know, I want you to really look at the big picture. Can you really do, you know, all of this job? Because if not, there are plenty of people that will, you're just going to disappoint yourself because you're not going to get it. And I have to tell people that, then they thank me for it. But you know, they, you know, tough love, and it, they don't, it doesn't feel good in the beginning to to say that. But uh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, I, I I I've seen so lots of people, and, and I think it's that that's another another profile very usual by these days, which is the constant learning without implementing without practicing because i uh, i see so many people oh i marco they 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 reach me out just to ask me do you recommend any course and and, and i say stop coursing and stop start doing <laughs> you're right i mean just because i took you know 10 courses in something does not make me a professional in that it gives me some insight but yes, do it. Oh, yeah, and that, that, that was a perfect analogy, Marco. And and, and I think uh, we are from another generation, which was we didn't have any option to make a blog, to shine on social media and everything. No. Now they have everything. Okay. If you are a chemical engineer, it's hard to make a blog about it and to show because you, you need a lab. Okay. But in, I mean, 70% of people of uh, works, you can start by creating content with a low budget, at least by yourself, showing people that you're the right solution of, or at least they may have you in count. Yeah, no, uh, again, uh, we're all a subject matter expert about something. That's what you need to post about. I don't care if you don't have a degree. There's oftentimes I talk about finances and uh, just because I've learned things over the years that I enjoy sharing. Uh, so again, uh, you're a subject matter expert about something. That's what you should post about. I don't care if you got a degree in it or not. Absolutely. Well, David, we are coming to the end. 
some ideas, some suggestions that people should take in mind when they start the appliance process? Sure. Uh, again, really, maybe only two places to look, uh, at least here in the US. That's Indeed and LinkedIn for jobs. Don't do daily job search. Get them searching every week because the rest will drive you crazy. And slow down. It's not about applying for 300 jobs. I'd rather you slow down and apply for 20. Look for that job. Look for those keywords in that job description. Print it out. Look for words that show up multiple times. Look for key industry words. Put them in there. If you have to hire somebody, that's fine. But a lot of people can do it themselves if they already have a great resume. But you need to slow down. It's not about applying for 300 jobs. It's about slowing down and tailoring. And it's about building relationships, like we've already said, when you have that job. Absolutely. There's never a, there's never a time to slow down networking. Absolutely. It's too much. And it's fun. Absolutely, fun. absolutely. <laughs> it's not, absolutely. It doesn't have to be boring. Absolutely. <laughs> In a cocktail, for instance. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. No, it, no. well, uh, a Thursday we might have some cocktails. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll try to make some uh, franchise <laughs> here in Portugal because I love the concept. And I think as we are uh, seeing, it has um, potential even in business matters, of course. So, <laughs> David, now I have the suggestions time, <laughs> uh -oh. which is a professional that you think it's good for us to follow, a book you read and also interesting, a habit you have, a tool, okay, a movie and a series. All right. Okay. Uh, Cor Corey Warfield on LinkedIn. Professional. Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, what was the next one? <laughs> book. <laughs> oh, book. book. That's easy. The seven, ha the seven Habits of Highly Effective People, but the audio version. Oh. Do, do you like podcasts and audiobooks? Audiobooks, yes. Uh, I used to travel a lot for work um, and by car. And, you know, uh, audiobook, CD or whatever, um, audiobook. Uh, and especially when it's the author that's mm -hmm. actually narr narrating it because you, you get to hear and he just it feels, it feels <laughs> better for me. It just does. Yeah, but seven, <laughs> yeah. seven Habits and it's an old book. The Seven Habits yeah, yeah. of Highly Effective People audio version, though. And talking about habits, a habit you have? <laughs> uh, you know what? Um, I wake up with energy. Um, I, fear, I, I eat right. I exercise right, even though I can't go to the gym right now, so I'm working out at home. Um, but... Uh, uh, my, uh, the exercise really does just as much for my physique and my muscles as it, mu as it does from here. Working out in the morning makes my, just my day just go by that amazing. So that is my, that is my one discipline, my one vice that, uh, I really enjoy that the coronavirus has taken away. Absolutely. Perfect. A tool. You know, I, I say I say it's resources, it's people. Okay, my okay. tool is it, asking people questions. Okay, That's perfect, it. perfect. <laughs> it's good. It's good. It's good. I, I love when my my guests pull the fence <laughs> and then come with new ideas. It's it's amazing because sometimes we are too strict uh, to to real tools and we forget this these so amazing tools which are networking. Connecting yes. with people, it's perfect. A movie. <sighs> oh, <laughs> I guess you could say um, The Princess Bride. I don't know which one is that. All right, let me think of another movie. Any Star Wars movie. Okay. Any of them. Perfect. And the Siri. And a what was it? Siri, like War of Thrones. Oh, a series? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Game of Game of No, I'm not a fan of Game of Thrones. You know, for me it's always got to be a comedy. Okay, know, I, like, I'm on like that. Big, like Big Bang Theory, 
just any type of comedy. I want a quick comedy. Perfect. Perfect. Well, David, <laughs> we come to the end. All truly, right. truly, thank you. It was an amazing time. Really insightful. So how can people search for you on the internet? Sure. Right now, um, best place to find me is on LinkedIn because I'm on there all the time. Uh, soon enough, this uh, I will have my new website up. Please don't visit it now. <laughs> Please get away. <laughs> get away. Not, not, and, and that's not, I'm not like subliminally making people go. Just, <laughs> just connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm very approachable. I post daily. And uh, I, but only connect with me on LinkedIn if you are going to be, you know, active and comment. So, okay, perfect. So, David, thank you a lot. It was a pleasure. It was thank really, you. as I, I was expecting, a really insightful conversation. Hopefully, we will meet Thursday night <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, what time is that for you? Right now, uh, 10 30 p.m. Okay, yeah, see, so for, for me, um, I'll be drinking early. Uh, that uh, what uh, the show is at uh, what time? Uh, three, yeah, I think it's at 6 30 p.m., right? Yeah, yeah, it's 3 30 my time, so I guess oh. I can drink at three in, in the <laughs> afternoon. In the afternoon, <laughs> last week, not... when it finished, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was uh, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. <laughs> for me <laughs> yeah was, you know oh my god it was it was a marathon a, a, a huge marathon <laughs> it was amazing it was amazing well time to wrap up to everybody who's watching us thank you please if you are looking the replay let us know send some comments some questions to david so he can answer okay so Wish you a good a good evening, a good morning, a good afternoon, whatever you are, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Marco.